So um, I, I lost about 23 pounds um, in like a month. Um, I was drinking about five gallons of water a day. I wasn't sweating, I couldn't swallow. Um, I had all this whole list, I have severe migraines, this whole list of symptoms that um, WebMD told me I had prostate cancer. So I was like, oh, I definitely, that's not it. So maybe I'll go to the doctor. So I went to the doctor and I had this whole list of symptoms and um, and I sat down with him and I was like, listen, there's something really wrong with me. I can't stay awake. Like, I can't stop peeing. Like, there's something really wrong. I know my body. I'm an, I'm an athlete. I know my body. And there's something really wrong with me. And he goes, oh, we run tests and you come back Thursday. This is on Monday. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's something wrong with me right now. And there's even more wrong with me on Thursday. So I'd really like if you could just figure this out right, right this second. And he's like, you feel that strongly about it, then I'll call you an ambulance. I'm like, I guess I'll, no, I'm going home. So I drove myself to the ER. Um, and I checked myself in at uh, Urgent Care at Rochester General, and the triage nurse checked and she goes, I gave her my list, same list, with tears on it, right? I gave her my list and she looks at it and she looks at me and she goes, let me check your blood sugar. And uh, she checked my blood sugar and it, this thing, this meter, I don't know, it's in like a briefcase, it was scary. And uh, she checks my blood sugar and she looks at me and she goes, I'm pretty sure you're diabetic. And I was like, what? That's impossible. Nobody in my family has diabetes, um, and I don't even know what that is. So I was like, that's totally impossible. I have a pituitary gland tumor, is what I told her. <laughs> um, she's like, no, you have diabetes. So I was all alone, and she put me on this little cart in the hallway because they were out of beds, and it took about four and a half hours to get an IV. Um, and I literally just sat there on this little, it was like a towel cart. Like it was, just, And she's like, just sit down right here, and there will be a doctor who will be with you shortly. In the hallway, like people walking by me, not having any idea what had just happened to me. Like, do I really have diabetes? Like, what is gonna happen to me today? And it's kind of scary. And finally I did get an IV in a bed and they ran a whole bunch of tests and poked me and prodded me all night long. Um, and they told me like the day after that, yeah, I definitely have diabetes. And then they started like barraging me with information. And until that point, I hadn't called anybody. I was, it was probably about 18 hours before I even made a phone call to let anybody know where I was because I didn't want to, I couldn't just be like, yeah, I'm in the hospital, why? I don't know, you yeah. know? So I had to wait for that diagnosis. And what happened after you were diagnosed? Um, well, while I was in the hospital, um, my endo came down, my new endo came down and explained to me what he did, and, um, and I was like, okay, well, this doesn't sound so bad, you know? I can do this, it's not gonna be that big of a deal. It sounds a little bit scary, but it's kind of all the stuff I already do, exercise, eat right, you know, who the hell knows why this happened, but I can keep doing what I'm doing. And I said, can I have a piece of graph paper? And he's like, sure. So I sat down and I kind of graphed out like, okay, this is where he wants my sugars to be. This is where I, I, can, I can do this. Like, and I made like this huge graph and I was like, this is, this is gonna be easy. I'm an engineer, right? So this is, this is great, data, I can do data. And uh, he's like, I think I'm gonna send you home. I was like, what? And so he sent me home because after a day, because he said that nobody had ever done that before. He said that I guess I was ready to go. And he sent me home with all my stuff and made me figure everything out. So I did, but it's a little daunting. It took me 40, I think my mom timed it. It took me 48 minutes to get myself my first injection. 48 minutes, I kept going, oh, no, no. And like, I just couldn't do it because I hate needles. So that was pretty awful. But after that, it got kind of easy. Or it didn't get easier, it got different. So like life doesn't get easier, it gets different. So I got used to it. If you met someone, let's say you had a niece who just got diagnosed at the age of 15 or something, what would you tell them if you, you know, you had a couple minutes with them to tell them about diabetes? Um, I would tell her, well, you know, this is scary and it's going to be scary. Every once in a while it's going to be really scary. But most of the time, if you do a good job, it doesn't have to be scary because you, you know your body and you're the only one that knows your body the best and it's your diabetes. So it's your diabetes and it's what you want it to be. If, you're, if you want your diabetes to be lazy and a couch potato, then that's what your diabetes is going to be. But if you want your diabetes to be a triathlete or a superstar or a mountain climber or a mom, like you can do anything else that's on your list, your bucket list, you can still do all these things. You just have to, the first step is your diabetes and define your diabetes and don't let it define you. Um, that's what I would tell her. And then she'd probably tell me I was crazy and I didn't understand her. <laughs> yeah, 15. Yeah. <laughs>